Thank you. 25 to 9. One of the options that might be considered when MPs debate uh, Brexit options tomorrow might be the so-called Norway Plus option. That would involve joining the European Free Trade Association and within that the European Economic Area that groups Norway with Liechtenstein and Iceland and puts them in the internal market of the EU. That plus bit means being in a customs union as well, which uh, they are not with the EU. Uh, We can talk to Iceland's foreign minister, uh, Gathlora Thorsson, who is in London and is indeed in our studio. Morning to you. Morning. What brings you to London? Well, I'm going to meet with uh, Jeremy Hunt uh, and we're going to uh, sign a, an MOU uh, to strengthen the relations between nations. Memorandum of Understanding. Yes. And that is a is that a specifically post Brexit deal, or were you, or, or or is it was it going to be signed anyway? Well, actually, after uh, Brexit, then we have strengthened relations with the UK quite a lot. And uh, we have uh, both ambitions of uh, having a future arrangement uh, to uh, strengthen the ties between the countries. We have the same strategic interest. And, uh, have a co- have, of course, have had a good relations for uh, 100 years, with few exceptions. Yeah. But uh, So it's important for us to uh, work on those things. And we have been very pleased with the attitude of the uh, British government yeah. when it comes Thank to uh, well, the we'll good relations. We'll stay off cod wars for the purposes of this conversation. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Let me get on to what I was saying in this introduction there. One of the things MPs are going to look at is, is what has become known as Norway Plus. Mm. Um, Norway, of course, being the biggest mm. of the EA countries by some considerable way. From the perspective of the Icelandic government, would Britain be welcome in that organisation? Well, I think uh, we have always looked in a very constructive way and uh, I'm not trying to influence your decision, but of course it would be good to have the UK. Uh, for example, in the EFTA, you are the ones who established the EFTA mm. and it seems to me that the debate is still the same as it was then. You wanted to uh, trade with everyone uh, freely while the uh, EU countries wanted to have a customs union. If you would be a member of EFTA, you would, uh, for example, Iceland, uh, we have a bilateral deal with uh, China after just made a deal with Indonesia just a few weeks ago. So, right. but so, still. So the plus then, we'd inherit some traders, we'd be able to, we'd be free to make trade deals. The minus, as some might see it, is that we would have to sign up if we were in the EEA for the, the pillars of the single market to accept, for instance, freedom of movement, etc. And that's just a given, isn't it? Well, that's something that uh, we we actually very pleased with. But uh, what some see as the minus is that we uh, do, not through the EFTA, because EFTA is a free trade. Yeah, uh, through the EEA. Uh, so, but through the EEA, then we have to accept about uh, 10% of, of the acquis. But, of course, we have... Uh, we do can you influence them? Yeah, in the, in the decision uh, shaping at the early stages, we can do And so. if Britain was part of the EEA, do you think there would be more influence for the EEA or would Britain unbalance the thing? Well, I think that uh, it would totally change the game if you would have the UK in. It would strengthen the uh, after pillar a lot. And I think that we would see uh, something that... Uh, you'd have uh, that Europe as a whole. Of course, there's a layers of cooperation in, in Europe, but we would uh, then, what everyone agrees on, that we should have a free market. Because there are some Europe. Norwegian politicians, aren't there, who think it would unbalance the whole thing, that actually Britain wouldn't be an easy partner because it wouldn't be able to, to accept those rules that it needed to accept in the same way as other countries do. I cannot see that's a problem. Right. Uh, can I ask you one other thing? The, the, the Norway Plus, as I was saying in the introduction, refers to, to being in the EEA, but also being in a, in a customs union with the European Union. Is, is that possible under the terms of, of the grouping that you're in? Well, I cannot quite see uh, why any, anyone wanted to do that, b- because uh, if you're... I think the specific issue for us is the Northern Ireland border, actually. Yeah, but... Uh, OK, but... Uh, <laughs> You have uh, Norway and Sweden. Uh, there are borders. There are no problems. So well, you, the last time I checked, uh, so you have Switzerland, which is not even a member of the EEA. But if we chose to be in the customs union, could we be in a customs union with the European Union and in the EEA? Uh, it would be a challenge to be... You could probably in the EEA, but it would be a challenge to be in the EFTA. And because, uh, I mean, w- we in EFTA, we trade with everyone. Right, we can make all the free trade deals we want to. If you are okay, so that is union. potentially quite a big um, problem it, for for Norway Plus, as people. Yeah, see. but it it could be a challenge, but uh, I wouldn't see see it as a problem, okay. uh, because uh, if you look at uh, the EA countries, the EFTA countries, yeah. they do trade freely with uh, with EU. 
you see it between Switzerland and, and uh, Germany. They actually, uh, yeah. Switzerland trades more than the UK with with the EU. And okay. Um, uh, Guthora Thorlison, thank you very much for talking to us this morning. And I should say all of these things, if you want to go on, on a line on the BBC's uh, site, uh, EA, EFTA, etc., etc., all explained there. Thank you.